Okay, guys, so if you have any questions from last time, no questions. How is everyone doing on their assignments? Are you putting your files in, in the Google Drive? Oh, no, I have not. <laughs> Forgot about that. Okay, so you guys need to do that. And uh, this is uh, last week before spring break. And uh, so turn in as many assignments as you can uh, uh, by the end of this week. And uh, once again, guys, uh, be safe at home. So that's another thing uh, I really wanted to stress on. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to start right now. Uh, so last time uh, we were working with type and uh, we have actually had a couple of lectures on type. Uh, it's a very big subject and uh, we can't cover everything in just few lectures, but at least uh, we have a good foundation of uh, understanding uh, some of the Adobe tools that help us uh, work with typography. Uh, as I mentioned before, type uh, can be used uh, as a written word, but type can also be used as uh, a design element. So one of the things I want to do today is, uh, previously once I had this question to the class and uh, we were talking about uh, uh, some of the elements of design. So. I, I just have a presentation over here. Uh, it's going to be very quick, uh, just uh, to give you a little information about uh, the basic uh, elements and the principles of design. So it will be helpful. And after that, uh, we'll still be working in uh, Illustrator and we will be creating uh, a couple of projects today. Uh, not uh, very difficult, but uh, uh, something you will enjoy. Okay, so let me just bring this website over here. Okay, guys. Uh, can you look at my screen? Yeah, yes. It's basic concepts. Right. Okay, so uh, it's just a review. Uh, whenever you are an illustrator, a graphic designer, a painter, or any type of artist, there are certain core concepts that you will follow throughout your career. We will review some of the fundamentals over here. Okay, so let's just. Okay, so first of all, composition and concept. Just about any artist or designer would agree that composition is the most fundamental concern in, uh, in creating any artistic work. So composition is about placing the elements of an illustration in just the right way to communicate desired message. A proper balance, order, and hierarchy must be achieved in order for an illustration to reach its ultimate goal. To understand composition is to understand visual communication at its core. So basically, uh, when we, we are working with uh, design, uh, we are trying to communicate visually. 
And in order, in order to uh, visually communicate uh, with our audience, uh, we need to follow certain uh, elements and the principles of design in order to make sure that that communication is uh, easy to understand, easy to uh, get through the whole, uh, you know, it's uh, the crowd. Nowadays, uh, there's so much information, there's information overload. So, so what succeeds in communication is important. Okay, so composition is important. So there are several uh, ways uh, uh, and some, uh, some rules uh, which were developed, like for example, the rule of golden mean and such. Uh, I'm not going to go over the rules today. It's just uh, just to get you familiar with some of the basic basic princip I mean elements of design. Okay, so um, usually we we say that uh, the uh, one of the basic uh, elements is point. So I'm going to uh, just bypass point at this time. Point is what point is uh, actually a line in motion. So we'll just say that line is the first element of design over here. The element of line cannot be underestimated in its power within an illustration. Line can be simple or complex, smooth or rough, heavy or light. But as a result of these different forms, they have the ability to create visuals that communicate a clear message to the viewer. Understanding the element of line is critical to being a good illustrator or designer. So let's just look at a few examples over here. So lines can be in motion, lines can be uh, uh, in circular motion, lines uh, can be put in a perspective. So, so line uh, is the one of the basic, basic uh, elements of design. Uh, you can, if you can also say that you know, line is a point. So, if it's just a point, but a point in motion, okay. And uh, lines uh, create a very dynamic illustrations. So that is one of the basic elements of design over here. Okay. Then there is uh, something called value. Uh, we discussed uh, value in, uh, you know, when we were talking about black and white, you, if you remember that lecture. So value is considered by many to be the most important consideration when creating su successful illustration. Value is the difference between the lightness and the darkness of colors and the expert manipulation of value in composition can give a drawing great depth and place emphasis in the key areas that the illustrator want to draw attention to. Being able to use value properly, creating contrast that directs the viewer's eye exactly where you want it to go is key success uh, key in successful illustration okay so we've discussed that uh, uh, when we were discussing uh, black and white how to convert a color image to black and white or black and white to color and uh, what are values so uh, in, in art, so values can be drawn by different techniques like hatching, cross hatching, stripling, scribbling, and so on. Okay, so color. So at this point in your education, you have probably been exposed to color theory in a number of different courses but don't let yourself become immune to the impact and importance of color. Color is a very big subject. Understanding color uh, psychology and color theory is crucial in being able to visually convey a message. And it's also important to remember that while using color properly in a composition can bring about 
a successful visual outcome. Uh, being amateurish uh, with color usage can cause a composition to fall short of its goals. Designers have millions of colors at their fingertips these days with the wide array of digital design software available. Don't let yourself take the, uh, the proper effective use of color in your illustrations for granted. So uh, we talked about colors before, so uh, just keep in mind some of the basic uh, uh, color theories. So colors can be very powerful other than the value in order to communicate. Then of course, uh, textures and patterns. To push a simple line drawing over the creative edge requires a little help from texture and pattern. Texture can be the addition of items to the media itself. So that is the text, uh, tactile texture, something uh, which you can feel, in this case, feel visually. Uh, what we are trying to say over here is that, yeah, you can draw, a texture, but at the same time, the material you are using uh, can also have a texture. Let's say that you, you, you are drawing on a textured paper or you are printing on a textured paper, or it can refer to the visual texture created by certain drawing techniques such as cross-hatching, shading, or adding dots or brush strokes. Patterns are created by repetition of certain shapes or strokes and can add a lot of dimension and depth to an illustration. Sometimes patterns are regular, other times they may be irregular. Either way, both pattern and textures have the ability to create a lot of visual interest in an illustration. So some examples over here. So texture, uh, enhance the feel, or you can also say it uh, creates, a, uh, enhance the uh, feeling of uh, uh, like, uh, like roughness, the tactile feeling to your two-dimensional illustrations. Then of course, shape and form. Shape and form can be a bit confusing, but essentially shape is two-dimensional while the form is three-dimensional. To be able to effectively capture the appearance of form in a drawing is to understand positive and negative shape and space. Successfully creating form can hinge on, on how well you define the negative space. If the negative shapes are clear, a good visual definition of form will follow. Okay. So form actually uh, creates the sense of three dimensionality in a two dimensional space. Okay, so I'm not going to go over this. Um, I think we have seen the uh, movie of illustration, illustrator, sorry. Okay, so a little bit about, you know, if you are an illustrator, so, Illustrators role in digital illustration today, many illustrators find themselves either using the Illustrator program exclusively or using it in a hybrid fashion with other techniques to create their original illustrations. So um, uh, right now we are talking about Adobe Illustrator, but it can be any uh, drawing program uh, which you can use, you can use uh, uh, on the Windows side, uh, side it is still very popular, uh, the Corel, Corel Draw program. Um, I'm not a Corel user, so I can't talk much about that. So mostly I've been using uh, Adobe software packages. 
but uh, anything, uh, any software that can create uh, vector information can be called as the drawing program. Okay, so this was a, a very short, quick uh, review of the basic uh, sort of principles of illustration. Uh, coming back to Illustrator, so we were, we have covered some of the tools uh, over here. So uh, today actually I want to uh, show you a, a technique, a technique to create a, a I would say a, a very uh, detailed illustration, okay. So I brought a picture of Apple, okay. So this is a photograph, okay. Photograph of an Apple which has been placed in Adobe Illustrator, okay. So this, is made up of what? This is made up of pixels, okay? So this is a high resolution image, but when I go close over here, you can start seeing these pixels, okay? Now, this is great. I can use this image as it is, but sometimes it becomes necessary to convert an image into a vector drawing, okay? So why do we have to do that? Because that gives us the ability to scale, okay? So the scalability factor. Now in this case, uh, if we want to create a more realistic illustration, so we can use this image to trace. Let's say that if we were creating a logo or we were going to create a label for uh, a bottle of jam, okay? So we want to use this uh, apple on that label, but at the same time, uh, same apple can also be used uh, on a big poster for that company. So we need to scale it up, okay? So, so what can we do over here? So uh, first thing which I did is after bringing this image, so I locked it, okay? So if your image is not locked, so that's, that's what you need to do is to use your selection tool, make sure that image is selected. So this is the image itself, okay? Uh, for this technique, uh, if you are using a higher resolution image, so if uh, depending upon how much detail you want, so high uh, resolution image can give you uh, much more details, or uh, I should say more realistic details when I will be tracing this. Okay, so I'm not talking about, uh, uh, you know, image trace option over here. You know, yeah, you can use that. For example, let's just do that and see what happens. So you select the image and then if I click on image trace, okay. It is saying tracing may proceed slowly with this large image. So this image which I am using is a high resolution image. Would you like to continue? I'll say, okay, you know, let's see what, what it does. Okay, so this is the black and white version. Okay, black and white means only 100% white and 100% black over here. But if I click in the, uh, in the options bar or uh, control panel over here, so there is, so when you click on this icon, so there is an image trace uh, panel. And uh, from here, you can choose different presets, okay? So right now, uh, this was the default, okay? And then we'll say, hey, you know what? Um, how about trying three colors? Okay, so I'll do this. So it's going to start uh, rendering the image in three colors. 
more colors I choose, uh, you know, slower the processing speed will be. Uh, at this time, this is a really big illustration. So yes, it's going to go, but uh, I'm just going to do three colors, but I'll show you a different way of working. I think I might have other things open over here. So let's see. Actually not, so it's just running really slowly. So while it's rendering, um, can I get some feedback from you guys? How, how are you guys doing and how are you coping staying home? I've been all right. Doing okay. Okay, so now if you notice that uh, Illustrator uh, tried to trace this image, okay, and it tried to trace image with just using uh, two or three colors. So right now, you know, my slider was set to two. And uh, so actually, so sometimes uh, 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 an illustration like that might work if you want to create a little more detailed tracing, so you could have uh, used, uh, so if I select this guy once again, I could have uh, selected high fidelity photo and so on. But the problem with that is that it creates so many anchor points that uh, if you have to edit or if you have to save your image, uh, your file size will be humongous, okay? But uh, that's not what we want from a, a vector uh, illustration. Uh, I'm not going to do this, but you know, just look at some of the other options which are there. Uh, three colors, six colors, 16 colors, uh, with just shades of gray, black and white logo. So that was like a default, which, uh, which we started with. And then sketched art, silhouettes, line art, so sometimes, you know, uh, just quick tracing of an image uh, may be helpful in order to start an illustration. But I want to show you another technique. Uh, it is not a very fast technique. Let me just undo this. But it can give you a lot of details. So first of all, I'll take this particular image. Okay, this is a photograph. Um, bring it in uh, Illustrator. So if you know, look at the layers. So layer one has this image in it. I'm going to select the image and do Command two to lock because I will be doing tracing on top over here. And uh, I don't want the actual image to move. Now, in order to create that tracing, uh, I'm going to create a new layer on top. So this is layer two. Okay, I'll just call it illustration or something. Okay, so this is where, so I locked this layer and this is where I will be starting my tracing. Now looking at uh, this apple, it looks like it's a simple uh, image, okay? Apple is round and then there is uh, a stem over here. So what I'm trying to do over here is to create a rendering of the apple itself in one layer and the stem will be a separate layer. So that's how I'm going to trace it. So in your layers, so why don't we name this layer instead of illustra uh, illustration? So let's just call it Apple. And I'll create another layer and I'll just call it stem. Okay, so I'll be working in the Apple layer. So I'll select the Apple layer. There is nothing in it yet, okay? So if I click on this little circle, nothing gets selected because there is no drawing in there. So we have to create a drawing. So 
I'm going to trace the outer edge of the apple. Uh, if it was perfect circle, I could have just used the ellipse tool to do that. But since the apple uh, may, it should look a little more natural, so in this case, I'm going to grab my pen tool, click P for the pen tool, and then you can start tracing. So I'll just do a quick trace over here. But uh, if you are trying to create a detailed illustration, then you may uh, want to spend some time while tracing. Okay. okay. So as I'm tracing, you, you can see that uh, I had black fill color selected in my color uh, area. And uh, I don't want that, so I'm just going to press the forward slash key on my keyboard in order to get rid of the fill color for right now. Okay. Okay, if you notice that uh, this end point over here, so this direction handle, so when I clicked over here and pulled this direction handle, so this is a little too long. So that's why I can't end this correctly. So I can correct the direction handle. So I'm using my pen tool, but if I press my command key, my cursor changes into a direct selection tool. And now I can readjust the handle. Not just that, but I can also readjust the point. And then I can close. And once again, you press your command key down in order to make any adjustments. So you may have to spend some time. So I'm just going to. Uh, just for the sake of time. So what we did is on the apple layer, if I hide my background layer, so, so this is a path which we have created. Now on this path, what we need to do is, uh, let, let me just give some color to it. So white fill color and black stroke. So if I turn on the apple, you can see that this object which is sitting over here, we just traced. Now I need to see details of the apple. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to the object menu and choose create gradient mesh. Okay, so when you create gradient mesh, uh, make sure to have your preview on so that you can see how the gradient mesh lines are appearing over here. And uh, I need a little more details, so I'm going to increase my rows, let's say 20. And how about columns? So I'll just make the columns 22, okay. Now, appearance to the edge, uh, at this time, I'm not going to worry that much. So if, if, even if you do a flat, so it's just going to create a flat color over here and say, okay. All right, so what we have done is that we uh, created a path and we converted that path into a mesh. Now, if I needed, even more details, so I could have created more rows and more columns. And even at this time, it is quite uh, detailed for this illustration. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is, I need to start coloring, okay? And I will be selecting individual mesh points to color. But what color should I fill in, okay? 
Now, I don't see the apple, which is down there. So I, I, I can't tell, you know, what colors will be used over here. So for that reason, uh, there's a keyboard shortcut if you may want, uh, want to write down or remember. Press your command key down and in your layers, in this apple layer, see where the eyeball icon is with which you can turn on and off the layer. So I'm going to press the command key down and then click on the eyeball. So when I do this, I can see the mesh and I can see what is behind it, but it is, it is going to temporarily turn off the actual colors which will be put on this layer, okay? So keeping that in mind, next thing I need to do is to go and find my direct selection tool, which is this white arrow, okay? Uh, if you press the A on your keyboard, you will uh, get access to the direct selection tool. So with the direct selection tool, I can come and click on a point, okay? So I just clicked on this point and I selected this particular point. And after selecting this point, I'm going to switch to my eyedropper tool, okay? I want you to keep an eye over here in the fill color. I have selected this uh, uh, anchor point. This anchor point, since uh, when I made this, uh, uh, this mesh, I kept everything white, so that's why white is showing up over here. But with the eyedropper tool, if I sample a color from right next to it, so now I've changed the color of this particular anchor point to this green. So I'm just going to select another point. And how I selected this other point without changing my tool is by pressing the command key. So when I'm in the eyedropper tool now, Illustrator remembers the last tool you have used. So if you press the command key, it's going to show you that tool, okay? So with that, you can make a selection uh, let go your command key and then sample a color. Press the option key, sorry, uh, press the command key, click and sample a color. Command, click, sample a color. Command, click, sample a color. Okay, so just going to do this row quickly and then we can see how this comes out. Okay, so at this time, you can't see what you are uh, drawing or, uh, or changing colors on the mesh. So what, what I'll do is, let's just turn off the background, okay? And command click on this eyeball icon once again. And you can see how the mesh uh, which I've created and each point is being given its own color and the gradient is being created within them, okay? So this is, uh, if you are really patient, okay, so, so this is the technique you can use uh, where in the end, what you will get is a vector illust illust illustration of an apple, which will be scalable. So you can scale it as small uh, as, uh, you know, you can uh, print it on a, a business card or it can be larger to be printed um, maybe on a, on a jam bottle or a label of a bottle or a magazine ad or a poster or even a billboard. So without losing any quality. Okay, so uh, let me just do this area over here quickly and then I'll sh also show you how to do the stem. So once again, command click on the eyeball icon to turn off the colors. Now, the only thing to remember over here is 
which areas you have covered, okay? So if, uh, if you go methodically, uh, then it, uh, it will make your life much easier. So if I turn this back on, so again, so these were the two rows up till here I have done. So I need to move in this area. So I, can, I think I'll start over here. Okay, so once again, command key will give me the direct selection tool. Let go the command key and then sample a color. Okay, command, sample, command, sample, command, click, sample, command, click, sample. So if you miss anything, you can always go back, uh, but uh, uh, it may take some time for you to, you know, depending upon the mesh you have created, how detailed that mesh is. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the stem. Uh, I just need some nice uh, values. So, Command and then just click, click to sample color. Okay, so let's see how far are we. So command click on the layer icon and see, you know, you, now you can see, you know, how slow the process can be. So there was a point I missed over here, this, this area I missed, this area. So once again, you can, you can command. I don't know what that means. If you like, I can search the web for it. <laughs> Sorry guys, so that's my C thinks I'm asking a question. All right. Excuse me. Yeah. So in this sense, um, you would have to do it to every single point then in the whole Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Okay. Now, uh, sometimes uh, you may uh, see some areas. So let's see uh, if I command click over here. So if in your illustration, uh, you know, if you don't want to go in too much details and you can say, you know, this red area over here, so instead of going with the direct selection tool, uh, you can choose your lasso tool and with the lasso tool, you can draw a marquee around the points which you want to color red, okay? And now if uh, you need to grab the eyedropper tool and then click over here. So if I go over here, so this is how it's going to cover, okay? But, uh, but again, if you have an uh, image with a lot of details, okay, so you may have to go point by point, okay. So if you can uh, make up a sort of a rhythm, so, and you say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to start from the left side and I can just go column by column and column and so on. So, so that will make life much easier. Okay, so, for the details, let me just do a couple of points over here. I might be going over the same points again. OK, 
Okay, so let's see if I covered, oh, it's still there. But anyway, so uh, just do this point. Okay, so for the stem itself, so just do it on a separate layer. Uh, you can turn off this layer, okay? And uh, you create another mesh over. Uh, so once again, using the pen tool, I'll just do this quickly. So it doesn't matter, you know, what your fill color is over here. But as long as you have, you can create a mesh. So if I zoom in and let's see how we can do this. Okay, so how do you create a mesh is going to object and choose create gradient mesh. Okay, and then uh, you can see, you know, how much detail you want over there. So maybe I can uh, start with, uh, let's do five rows and four columns over here. Okay. And then once again, in order to see the background and the colors, command click. Then you uh, grab your direct selection tool, click on a point, eyedropper tool, sample color, and now uh, Illustrator will remember these two tools. So the first tool I used was direct selection tool. The second tool is the eyedropper tool. So if I press the command key, it will go to the last tool which I used. So that was the direct selection tool. Let go the command key, click, click. Let me do a couple of other points and then we can. Let's take a look. See how it's coming up. So I might have missed some points. Uh, it's a good idea to start with a white background so that you can actually see the color. So if, you know, right now I'm not sure. So I might have to go back over here. Okay, anyway, so uh, this is one thing I want you to do. Um, I want you to create an illustration of a fruit, okay? It can be an apple, it can be a cherry, it can be a strawberry, it can be uh, anything with which we can make a jam, okay? And uh, after you create that illustration, I want you to uh, use that illustration to create a bar, uh, I mean the label for that bottle, okay? Let me show you some, I, I was just Googling over here. Uh, you can also Google and see, you know, how the labels are created. Uh, this will be a good exercise to, uh, to see how, uh, you know, you, uh, you can uh, use your illustration as well as, uh, uh, you know, combine that with your typography, okay? So it can be, uh, you know, type on a path or uh, type uh, in an area. And then you, all, you can also explore uh, different fonts, okay? Try to create a good hierarchy of fonts and so on, okay? So this is one example over here, but uh, there are like millions of examples online. So you may want to see and get inspiration and see, you know, how things are done. 
Okay, so these are some cans over here. Uh, label making is a big, big industry. Okay, so, so take a look and see, here's a good jam bottle over here. Okay, so, so the idea is to create an illustration, okay, and use that to create a label. Okay, any questions on this? So we're making a strawberry jam, or I mean a fruit jam out of anything? Uh, you are uh, creating a label for a fruit oh. jam. Uh, using your illust uh, illustration of that fruit. It can be an apple, it can be an orange, uh, you know, you can create a label for a marmalade. Uh, it can be a peach jam, it can be a cherry, it can be so, any. So basically we get a picture of a fruit, then then we trace it, and then we create something like a banner for a thing, because... Not a banner, a label, which will go on a bottle. Uh, let, uh, let's say that uh, it, it's a mason jar, okay? So, so basically so we have... Basically you are designing a label. Does the fruit need to be more hyper-realistic like the vector image you are making or is it more illustrative like some of the pictures on these labels that you're showing? I, I will leave that up to you. Oh, okay, thank you. So I will leave that up to you and see what looks uh, good. When does it do? Okay. Now uh, this, uh, if you go in detail, so this illustration may take some time. So I will say that uh, it will be due first thing after spring break. Uh, if you're not putting that much detail, you can also just uh, get this done in a couple of days too. But I will say that uh, for, for our purposes, so, you know, uh, just, uh, think that it's going to be after spring break. Are there recordings of all of these Zoom meetings so we can go back? Uh, good question over here. Yes, there, is, there are recordings and I'm going to share that link with you. Uh, I was uh, working on it last night. And uh, let me see where. When is spring break supposed to be a scheduled for regular schedule for? Uh, yeah, just whatever the regular uh, regular schedule is. Uh, so that is the spring break. Uh, let's see. I'm going to. Okay. Will it be okay if I put that in the chat link? Okay, so these are uh, uh, last three lectures, YouTube lectures, and uh, today's lecture also, I will be putting that uh, probably tonight. Okay, when once our, it gets rendered and so. When does our type art do? Huh? Our type art. Where we make um, some type of illustration using type. Right, so you will be using type. Uh, want want uh, want to see uh, you know uh, let's just let's just do something quickly over here. I'm just going to do a mock-up, and then of course your illustration of the fruit will be in vector form, and that's what you are going to do. Okay, so let's see if I can find. Yeah, I'll just use this. Actually, uh, this is a picture of an illustration uh, somebody did. So let's just put this over here. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, this is uh, something I just Googled. And uh, if you notice that this is not an actual photograph, uh, someone uh, traced it, uh, not traced it, but uh, create a gradient mesh, prob probably in Illustrator, okay? Using the same technique. Okay, so let's say that if this is what we are using for the label. Okay. Uh, this is actually a stock image over here. But just for the demo purposes, I'm just going to use it for right now. And Say that it's going to be in this circular area. So I created a circle, selected both these objects, object, clipping mask, make. Okay. Can you put the screen back onto your computer? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize that I'm doing that. Okay, hold on. Okay, can you see the cherries? Yeah. Okay, uh, command Z a couple of times. Okay, so so once again, uh, this is just a, a you know, stock illustration uh, somebody did. So I just took that picture for right now. But uh, in your case, you are going to be creating a vector from a, uh, from a picture of your choice. So I'm just going to create a circle on top and selecting both objects together. Object, clipping mask and make. Okay. So now this is just an image. Uh, uh, there, is, there will be a scalability issue. So if I wanted to use this illustration on a big poster, if I enlarge it larger, so I will lose uh, some quality. So in order to uh, make your illustration scalable, so so you are going to create a gradient mesh just like, uh, you know, the demo I was doing earlier. All right, so anyway, so what I also want wanted to let you know is, let me just uh, lock this. You select and do command two and Made another circle over here. So you can create a text on a path. Okay. You can create hanging text. Remember how we did that last time? You can put details for, you know, what needs to go on a label. I will let you do that research. Okay. Uh, so what goes on a jam bottle label? So it can have, uh, you know, uh, how many ounces of jam is in the bottle. Okay, it can have name of the company, it can have name uh, branding of that uh, particular uh, company. What else can, you know, there might be some decorative items uh, on a jam bottle label. So let's just, so just Google and see, you know, you can find some really uh, interesting uh, examples over here. For example, uh, this one, grandma's homemade, okay. Uh, some contact information. And what is this? This is a raspberry jam and then net weight is 12 ounces, APR. What is that APR? Not sure what APR is over here, but but you know you uh, just do some research and see what can go 
on a jam bottle. So you may find some different examples like this one which we were looking at. So this is more like a homemade watermelon pickles and then the date can be written. So this is uh, some, you know, DIY type project. So, so I would say uh, look at uh, some commercial jam bottles and see how the label is done. Uh, this will be a good portfolio piece for your for you. Okay. So, uh, so we are going to keep the lecture short today. Uh, that's all I want you to do uh, starting today. Uh, on Thursday, uh, once again, it will be a really short lecture uh, so while we are getting into spring break. So by saying that at this point, uh, if you guys have any other questions before I stop. Uh, will tonight's recording be available to us on Thursday? Uh, most probably I'll do it tonight. So okay. uh, so you should have it uh, by tomorrow morning. Is there anything to do Thursday? Pardon? Is anything due Thursday? Uh, what we have done so far, uh, what was your last project? It was making an illustration using using type. Right. Um, if uh, if you have uh, completed that by Thursday, that should be fine. Otherwise, I'll collect them after spring break. Okay. I'm not, uh, uh, you know, very stingy about that at this point, because I know that uh, some students are still trying to, you know, get used to this new arrangement. Okay, so let me stop sharing the, my screen for a minute. Just want to see, you know, if you've got 14 students over here. Uh, this is how I'm also doing the attendance. So I have everything recorded over here, so I can always check that. But anyway, um, so if you guys have no other questions, so I will let you work on your projects. Uh, and uh, if you don't have any other questions, so, so we are going to stop here and I'll see you on Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and uh, stay safe, guys. You too. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.